Right. Who is the last name? Who, you, you, listen, you said it was spicy, so yeah. come on. Yeah. Okay. you got to deliver okay. on this one. I don't know if people would even get this, but when I was trying to make this list, this guy kept appearing in my mind for okay. some reason. Okay. And I'm not sure if he's the correct pick, but hear me out. <laughs> okay. I got crims. No, it's a banger. Here's the sad thing, mate. I agree. It doesn't immediately come to mind, but what an insanely long career this guy had as a very good player, yeah. And again, a few, a few similarities we've drawn with every single one of them so far is that they eventually started in their local scene and they ended in an international one towards the you know latter part of their career. Krems right now, obviously, in, in Fnatic and in international lineups, and he didn't really develop his playstyle into something else, some different role. He was also part of the, I believe, first major in DreamHack uh, Winter Yonchopping. Yeah, he was I on think the LGBT. part of LGB, yeah. yeah, with Olofmeister. So they were there and they were playing already back then. Like they were kind of, people think they were cheating at first and GW thing were happening with Pasha. They, were, they had a beef online CS when it came out. And... Uh, he was since then at the top of their uh, top of the game, basically. Ap apart from probably few periods where he was, I believe he went to Godsend for a brief period with Flasha. He was part of the Fnatic team and uh, and these LGB guys, etc. So part of Swedish CS that turned into an international one. And this is there is complete opposite because again, it's he it's, he's, he doesn't seem too vocal in the team. He seems like a very very consistent and uh, very, very m mature guy, I would say, uh, if that's a word. And, and uh, he, he strikes me as a figure that shouldn't really be on this list because he gives me vibes that he just doesn't care sometimes. It's just like, yeah, w whatever. I, but clearly, this guy is a great teammate. He played with a bunch of other names. Like, a lot of players were his teammates. And I've never heard... Of, single bad thing said about Crims. Uh, it, it goes a long way to have this kind of long career and never hear a bad thing. Yes. Obviously, Apex had some, some disagreements with French players, like everyone did, probably they hate each other. <laughs> and then Kerrigan, and uh, there was this Kerrigan Nico thing, sure. who should I GL, etc. But Crims, you never, he, he, he's not even spoken about in this kind of context. Yes. I mean, a few things to say on this would be like, um, first of all, on the personality thing you point out, the weird thing is, he is someone, by the way, you'll see in the game sometimes if like he loses in a bullshit way, he might like angrily react, you know, on the yeah. camera. But if uh, what I'll say is this, if you ever watch him when he's in the round and he's alive though, he's one of the best poker faces ever, mate. Like it doesn't surprise me that he was insane in clutch scenarios because this is the guy really where he has the perfect poker face with no emotion while playing. And he really does. He has like that Zipnix quality where it's like they always just make the right play. It's not even that. Here's the funny thing about players like that, Steko. People, People want to hype it up that they're like the mastermind. The joke of how I actually think those guys really succeed is they just somehow aren't affected by pressure. It's not they play up to it or they do some mind. I think they somehow, pressure just doesn't do it. Like they just do what you should do normally if you're against bots. But like it just worked because no one else could like hold their nerve. It makes you just look clinical. You just you just do it. You're always going to the right angle. Then the next person, you make it a 1v1 in a 1v3. And then it's three 1v1s instead of like some crazy highlight clip. And then by the time they've won the round, they just win the most boring clutches ever. But it's like, that is insanely valuable. And I can tell you, I do know from being around him at events, if like, for example, they lost early or got upset, he would. He has, he's actually someone who could get upset and might be the guy who's sort of like, ah, oh, fuck it, maybe I'm not going to this after party or whatever. But like I say, in the game, I actually do think he's an example of one of the best mental of all time. I mean, if you look all the different years, teammates, this guy also in the game, what an insanely consistent player. What an absurdly consistent player. Like, I'll give you a stat that might blow people's minds. I actually do think he's underrated in terms of history because his problem obviously was Olaf Meister was more famous or Flusher made the highlights and then years later, Brolan. And then, you know, you just go down the list. There's always someone else gets the highlights, right? The craziest ever one was that last year he had at the top in 2018. Dude, if I tell you the stats right now, you will be like, how could that go under the radar? So if you remember, 2018 was the year where they had the last little run before they got to like, it wasn't the later one with, with Brawlan. This is the one where they had like the, they won the kind of 80 over phase and they won the like, whatever the fuck that was. Like, I think it was like WASG or something. They won all that money early on in the year. And then they had that thing where Flusher left and he went to cloud nine and then they remade the team after that year, right? So it was sort of like an up and down year. Like it had a bit of early success and it was a bit whatever. If you ever go on Hitch on TV, I pulled the stats up here. So Lan, 2018 are the stats I've looked up 
support for Crimps, right? This whole year on land, Steko, he has 0 0.8 kills per round, right? Those are like simple numbers, bro. That is, this is in 2018 too. Like this guy actually went under the radar with a 1.19 rating, mate. That's fucking bonkers. Like, and this is like we're saying, like you said, he was at the first major in 2013. That's five years in. That's like loads of teams. By the way, think about how many lands he must have played. You've already played a billion lands. You should be burned yeah. out at this point in your career, you know. You shouldn't be able to put up a year like that. Like that's like essentially, that could be someone's best year ever in their career. So I also think just like, first of all, as a pro, what an amazing like work. Like the, the, the what you'd say in English is, slang is you'd say it's like he's like the guy who works on the construction site stay cool. he just gets up every day puts the hard hat on you get the hammer and you just do hard work every day you know it's not going to be easy you have to just go to work do your job like I, I think people can never appreciate if they haven't done it. it it's not as simple as like oh i had to, it was three months i was really motivated this guy just just did his job for like six or seven years in a row that's very impressive to me and also to have this kind of a teammate on the team, it spreads his mentality. Whatever you do, if you have this guy on team, I, I can guarantee you 100% that if you say his work ethic, for example, is really good, and his teammates are in the practice room at the events, and he's, they see Crims doing this kind of thing, it will spread, and they will feel like, oh, but this guy is really working hard, maybe I should work hard as well. And it naturally pushes the other guys, even without telling them anything to do. This is like normal psychological stuff. Even us Apex at the major, like we were, st we were in the practice room and then we see everyone grinding and watching demos and trying to anti strat And suddenly one guy just walks into the room and he's like dropping everything and he's doing it with us as well because he was like, damn, these guys are really working hard. I'm going to help them. But at the same time, after the major, we had a few periods where we were just lazy, you know, and we just... We just fell off after 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 the success, and we didn't work as hard, and it spread it as well. Like people were, like they were slack. We were slacking. Like, and I saw this in most sports. For example, when I was a little bit after success, we were slacking, and it's natural in the team. But the Crims guy, uh, I mean Crims and his team, he had multiple successes, and it feels like he never stopped grinding after the success, and uh, it's such a good and valuable thing to have in a team or in a teammate that he just keeps pushing everyone forward. And yeah, I mean, whatever, whatever he did with all the, with all the, you know, performances at the lens, like I wish I had this, I had like answer to how he did it. But uh, at, at first glance, it looks like it's through consistency. And again, he had teammates, Look at the teammates that they had, okay? So he had Olof Meister, he had Flusha, he had JW. It wasn't like, not like he's a star of the team that he's in. LGB and then uh, Fnatic and then Godsen and then Fnatic again. Never a star, yet he's always performing well. Yes. And the other thing as well to me is, like I've always thought in theory, the most OP player in Counter-Strike isn't actually usually like a superstar player. It's when you have a player like this that's willing to do sort of like shit slash boring slash just like the meat and potatoes roles. But they also actually have like a big game. Like that comes in. This guy can be an MVP at a tournament. This guy can actually like frag out as well as doing your shit role. Like if you do that, like you say, if you would then add in those other pieces, if you then have like Prime Olaf Meister or you have like Brawlan on the right, you're just going to, you're going to win a lot of tournaments. You're going to win a lot of matches at a minimum. You're going to be in really good position to be a top top team yeah and uh, i i saw a lot of demos of crims back when in hellraisers and in mouse sports when i started to play these kind of positions and the roles that he was having on on the ct side especially and uh, what struck me is then i changed my mindset to value consistency over high peaks of, right of, of some of of players because having peaks of course it's nice to have but you can't have five players who have like yes. really inconsistent results and high peaks and very low lows. You have to have those consistent players on a team that are especially put into really tough positions such as anchor and uh, they, you need to be able to perform day in, day out, even though you're not going to carry the game, but you need to do your job no matter what the round is. And Crims was someone that I really looked up to even to this day, like there were multiple scenarios where I was just watching his demos, even though they didn't perform that well or, or whatever, or he didn't perform that well, but there was always something to take away. And uh, it warms my heart that I actually thought of his uh, name multiple times when I was making this list because it shows me like kind of mental connection. Again, I barely spoke to the guy. I don't think I've ever spoken to him. I'm going to be honest, but 
the the way he plays, I can relate it so much because I value it so much. And this is something I wanted to be in my teams. Someone who is consistent, no matter what my score is, no matter what the tournament is, whether it's online match, whether it's scrim, whether it's semifinals of the major. I wanted to be someone that my teammates will look to my to me and they will say, okay, this guy is reliable. I can rely on this guy. He's gonna. I know what he's capable of and I know what he will do. Whereas sometimes you have these stars of the teams that you will look towards and you're not sure how they slept and how they will perform. Is there going to be an insane game or is this going to be just an average and we will have to switch things up? But to me, consistency over peaks all day long. And that's probably why I chose the, the list with longevity because consistency goes hand in hand with this. I actually think what you're talking about here is also a very good way to frame essentially what made Crim so valuable in his teams. There's like a few angles to it. So one is when you have a very consistent style, like you're saying, it's not as much about the ups and downs. It's not like he has like 30 kills one game and then four the next. He really is the guy who just has like the 17 kills every game and the same types of kills. Is One thing that's mad underrated about that Steiko is that enables someone else on your team. Might be like a JW who does crazy moves. If you're super consistent and the rest of your teammates know where you're always going to be and what you're doing, it actually now enables the guy who does the wild card crazy move. Like he then sort of can know like someone's still watching this spot or he even if I die, someone can hold this spot instead of two people being there. That one thing already is underrated because you notice the fans only going to, their eyes going to be drawn by the guy doing the crazy move. They're not going to realize it's only enabled if someone else sort of shores up the defenses as it were. And then similarly, as an actual anchor, he would literally do that. Like most famously, this is a guy who everyone can remember used to play a B site on Inferno and he was the most prototypical anchor ever. He would do that thing where one, it means back then, back in the day when they were classic on Inferno, people might know all of used to play the same site with him that just means Olaf can all, all rotate anytime he likes he can either push the banana he can rotate because this guy can hold B site on his own even though it's one of the hardest to hold and even the way he would hold it dude there are so many people who've played supported positions I know who copied this style if people know in the modern day how Perfecto plays that is Crims he also understands right you know when you play B anchor the player who thinks he's super skilled Steko peeks into the fucking banana he wants to get the first kill Crims is the player who just stays alive he just just knows it's actually you have to come to me when you come to me i'll kill the people on the site other than that i'm giving time for the rotation county utility i'm throwing my own fight i'm just that's like those players are so hard like famously i always say for perfect though if you ever try attacking that b site on overpass good luck He'll ne you'll never fucking find him, mate. He'll, he'll waste 15 seconds. He'll use two use of PC utility. You'll be still waiting to plant the bomb and he'll still be alive in the site. Like, that's so valuable. And then the last thing I'll add in as well is I actually think people really misunderstand when you play roles like that. Think about this, right? If they all attack the site and I'm on my own as the anchor, I'm simultaneously killing people. But I always have to come. I have to come to the people rotating and the people doing the flank. And so, like, people don't realize it. Like, these are all things that they never show up on a scoreboard. There's no stat for any of these things. But the difference between having that guy in your team and just having just another guy of equal skill be night and day. Like, I actually think the funny thing is the best person for Crims, the joke is if you wanted to make a documentary about Crims, you should probably actually just make it not even about him. He shouldn't even be in it. It should be everyone else on his teams. It should be like, what was he doing here? How did he like, like if you're JW or something, how, what did he do when you would do this move? That's the person I sort of want to know from because I feel like the, they would be the ones where I feel like people, his teammates would surely rave about this guy. It feels like he must be everyone's favorite teammate in his teams, you know? Yeah, there's a reason he's uh, he's at the top for so long, and he his uh, Fnatic is keeping him very close. And he's uh, being th there were times where Fnatic decided to go international, and you would think uh, about sure. the lineup. And you probably don't want, I mean, don't think about Crims being in that lineup. Uh, you you have a bunch of different players to from from pool to to pick, but yet when they announce it and Crims is part of the lineup, it kind of makes sense. Like he's He's so flexible when it, when it comes to like getting along with people, teams, getting along with different cultures. This is another thing we didn't spoke about at all this thing, uh, the this uh, interview because a lot of all of these four players they had to go into international team and they the 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 culture changes completely. Yes, and they were all not only able to withstand the change. Some of them were in charge how this culture will look, meaning we have two IGLs on the list. And Crims, super flexible. He can adjust to anything in-game, probably out of the game as well. And um, this is just my full admiration, honestly. 
Right, one last thing I have to ask is this then, because I on certain themes I will ask this. It's not going to be about the four players. It's going to be why didn't you choose other people? Like I'm not as they I'm not doing like honorable mentions, but it's a bit like that. Like for example, as I said, there are a lot of really great superstars. Like spoiler, Simple's a pretty constant. You got long and longevity, and he was doing it at the absolute tops. So is there a reason you didn't go for the more like big obvious names? Like were you actually intentionally trying to do some hipster picks here, or was there a different theme to how you picked it? Um, honestly, I was thinking about someone who attended first major. Oh, right. I, I, not, not really that I will guarantee pick only those people. But when I think of simple, I remember when we were teammates in Hellraisers and he was, you know, kind of nobody still. And okay. that, that was like 2014. Then he got into the scene like 2015 ish, really on the, on the good level. And that's already like two years that I kind of. It, it's missing. He wasn't playing the game when NIP was on top. You know, sure. it, it, a lot of things change, could could have changed, right? Plus, even Device, I, I mentioned him before, but even Device with a one uh, year break after NIP fiasco, uh, like I couldn't, I couldn't really put him in because I feel like that year could have given him a certain boost. Obviously, he got rusty, but at the same time, it's a reset mid career mid csgo career and uh that's why uh players that i picked didn't have this luxury of having this break they never were benched i believe or they were never teamless uh they were always in the grind mode practice day in day out with a team traveling the world it's admirable and probably i miss someone for sure but oh, again sure. nico nico 2014 came into the i remember him playing against i nation me playing against i nation when i was still not a pro player and i was playing against nico and i was just recently watching that game and uh, laughing how bad we were but uh, oh, see, so when you said longevity, you really meant like as much as possible because it was like basically you're going all much. the way back to the first major exactly. right i say okay i i think i think people that are playing right now will have longer careers that for, than, for example, we talked about, let's say, Crims or Kerrigan. Sure. They will have better longevity. But I, I'm talking about people that already have this longevity. Like, By the way, I know what you mean as well. Person. It's also, in a way, in a more impressive feat to be like the best from 2013 but still be good now than it is to have been like awesome even. Because that the joke is, if people watch those demos from 2013, they're going to think it's this is an MCS goal, but the fuck they're not even playing any of the strats. Like that version of the game, the idea you'd still be relevant even seven years later is, is ridiculous. Yeah. There's yeah. not pretty, there's not many other people from then you could even put on this list. So fair play. Yeah. By the way, I have a quick and follow up then. Here's the, here's the spicy question though. Obviously, I haven't picked the best time because technically you're not in an active lineup now, but. Would you fit this bill? You've been, you've got quite a lot of longevity in your career, right? I think if I would fit this bill, I, I think I should include at least like ten or fifteen more names. <laughs> okay, fair Ni Ni Nico starting. Okay. I think we got a set, little bit of a similar breakthrough at, a, at okay. when you look at the times. And he's playing obviously the much more uh, much higher level than me for a long time. So obviously, I. When you initially uh, messaged me to to do this, you you said something about sp support players and and uh, kind of these players that are very selfless. And I was thinking about it, and I was afraid that I would put myself on a list because okay. obviously I'm I'm really biased. But that's why I wanted to come up with something different and something unique where I don't really talk Fair about enough. myself because I want well. I don't know. It would be really biased, I would think, and it's kind of selfish and cocky and everything. I, I, I like to talk about these things, especially with you, because you are uh, your your history knowledge about about this is much more is much less clouded than mine because I remember very vaguely sure. what was happening back then, and uh, I think I think this was a good list, honestly. I, I I'm trying to think of a name that would fit in better than these four. And if you guys know, you can write it in the comment section or whatever, but I, I'm, I'm really looking forward to for some names that you come up with. To see more cool, funny, interesting clips based on topics from my content, well, subscribe to this channel then, or, you know, be a pleb and don't.